Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss about the telemedicine practice guidelines enabling registered medical practitioners to provide healthcare using telemedicine. Myself, uh, Dr. Suresh Badadman, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center and also Head of Forensic Psychiatry Services, Nimans, Bangalore. I would like to have a disclaimer before I start my presentation. This presentation is academic in nature only. This is not a legal opinion. If you would like to have any legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. I also request you kindly to go through the original document of telemedicine practice guidelines, which was released by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on 25th March, 2020. We have reached planet Mars, but not our rural population with regard to healthcare. There are many reasons. Some of the reasons are Doctors are apprehensive using telemedicine platform because of legal issues. At the same time, there are many state medical councils have issued notification that telemedicine is illegal in India. At the same time, there are some couple of court decision which made doctors more apprehensive and not to use this telemedicine platform. But however, in the background of COVID-19, that is coronavirus infection, this telemedicine has found to be a, one of the best weapon globally to counter coronavirus infection. In this regard, this telemedicine guidelines was released by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on 25th March 2020. Telemedicine practice guidelines forms the Appendix 5 of the Indian Medical Council Act, basically under the regulation that is Professional Contact Etiquette and Ethics Regulation 2002. Now the question is, what is the validity when it is the guideline is formed under Appendix 5 of Indian Medical Council Act of 1956. When we have National Medical Commission Act recently implemented on 2019. Actually, National Medical Commission Act 2019, Section 21, Subsection 2 speaks clearly that nothing will stand the repeal of Indian Medical Council Act of 1956. The education standard requirements, the provision of the Indian Medical Council Act 1956 rules, regulations, minimum standards, whatever has been implemented continues to hold good until National Medical Commission Act rules and regulations are implemented. That means this guideline is a legally valid document. Do this guideline comprehensively discusses about the telemedicine consultation in India? No. Specifically and explicitly, it excludes hardware and software, infrastructure and maintenance. It also excludes data management, where the data will be stored and what is the standard and interoperability have been excluded. At the same time, this guideline prohibits using digital technology for conducting surgery or any invasive procedure. And also, it keeps the discussion of research and evaluation and continuous education outside the ambit of this guideline. Further, it also says that it does not discusses or it excludes the consultation outside the jurisdiction of India. Who can provide telemedicine consultation under this guideline? Registered medical practitioner. So how, how these RMPs are defined? RMP is defined as a person who is enrolled in the state medical register or the Indian medical register under Indian Medical Council Act of 1956. What are the prerequisite for RMP to undertake teleconsultation? The prerequisite for a registered medical practitioner to practice telemedicine guidelines is basically same professional and ethical norms and standards which are applicable traditionally in-person consultation or what we call it as a real face-to-face -face consultation, same standards are applicable. At the same time, the guidelines also mandates online course which are made available by the Board of Governors and this has to be done mandatorily within three years and that should be a qualifying course for this telemedicine consultation. But however, during this interim period, these guidelines need to be followed. What are the ethical and legal standards for telemedicine consultation? See, three important points need to be kept in mind. First and the foremost, professional ethical norms and standards which are applicable in-person consultation, what we call it as real face-to-face -face consultation, same thing is applicable. The same laws, rules which are applicable in-person consultation, what we call it as real face-to-face -face consultation, the laws which are applicable, same also applicable in telemedicine consultation. Along with this, 
telemedicine practice guidelines 2020 is applicable. Can I provide telemedicine consultation to a patient residing in another state? The guideline is very crystal clear. A RMP is entitled to provide telemedicine consultation to patient from any part of India. What are the guiding principle of teleconsultation or telemedicine consultation? The guiding principle of the telemedicines are from the patient perspective, the patient has a right to discontinue the telemedicine consultation anytime. Similarly, the telemedicine consultation will be treated with similarly to the in-person consultation with regard to law and ethics for the doctor. The professional judgment, judgment of an RMP shall be the guiding principle of telemedicine consultation. The RMP can choose not to proceed with telemedicine consultation at any given point of time. And at the same time, RMP has the discretion to decide the mode of consultation. It may be in-person, it may be email, texting, audio, phone call, images, video, dig video and digital form of any type of consultation. So these are the very essential uh, guiding principle of telemedicine. Can either of the party can be anonymous during the telemedicine consultation? No, the telemedicine guideline clearly prohibits such anonymity. Both RMP and the client need to identify themselves. A obligation is casted on the RMP to verify and confirm the identity of the patient. He can ask other card, PAN card and any government recognized ID card. At the same time, registered medical practitioner shall display his name, registration number, qualification and specialization before starting the consultation. What are the different methods and mode of teleconsultation? This telemedicine guideline has been very magnanimous. It has recognized text that is SMS, email, messaging platform, images, audio that is phone call, video, digital data connected with various devices like for example ECG machine sending the report, mixed method, a doctor can call, send an email, at the same time patient can send the video consultation. Any platform, this guideline has not prohibited any social media. The reason being is telemedicine guideline wants to have a platform which is easily accessible to the patient. For example, a smartphone or even a software like social media like WhatsApp or Facebook or which is easily accessible to the patient. And also the doctor also has been given an opportunity to choose what platform he wants to choose. No media has been prohibited currently under the telemedicine guideline. Who can initiate the teleconsultation? A patient, a caregiver of the patient, a registered medical practitioner or a health worker. So four of them can initiate the telemedicine consultation. What are the different types? First consultation and follow up consultation. These are the two types of consultation can be proceeded. But however, I would like to remind you the registered medical practitioner has the discretion to decide the mode of teleconsultation. It may be in-person consultation, texting, email, audio or video. So the RMP's discretion plays a very important role. That amount of freedom has been given to the RMP. What is the process of initiation of teleconsultation? The patient will make a call either by sending an SMS or making a phone call or a video call. As soon as he does it, that is considered as an implied consent. There is no need of taking a separate consent because patient is initiating the consultation. Once the patient has initiated, the doctor has to make an identification. He has to ask him about the ID card and make sure he is talking to a person who has a valid government ID. Once he has identified the patient, he will quickly assess for any emergency requirement. Is there emergency? Case is there. If there is an emergency, immediately the RMP will advise him for first aid, counsel him and refer him to the nearest registered medical practitioner or to the health establishment. If there is no emergency, the doctor will continue with the detailed assessment. During the detailed assessment, he may again stumble upon some important emergency requirement or emergency consultation is required in person. So immediately again, the doctor will refer him to the first aid or for a RMP. Still, during the detailed assessment, he does not find any kind of uh, emergency requirement, he will continue with the detailed assessment. The detailed assessment or evaluation includes collecting information, history, 
physical examination if required you may ask him to go to the nearest rmp and get the physical ex examination done ask for the investigation when he asks for the investigation he will pause the telemedicine and it will be resumed again after two or three days once the investigation is available at the same time if the rmp feels that he needs in person consultation immediately he will be sent for rmp consultation in person consultation at the same time rmp shall maintain all the patient records whatever the transaction occurs during the telemedicine consultation when should doctor take explicit consent we talked about implicit now we are talking about explicit consent what is the format of explicit consent the explicit consent has to be taken whenever an healthcare worker or an rmp or a caregiver initiates the telemedicine consultation an explicit consent can be taken either by a written format or else it may be email text audio video message so this uh, what we call it as telemedicine guideline has been uh, very very forward and also progressive in thinking the patient can simply state either in an email or by an audio or by a video saying i consent to avail telemedicine consultation that as simple as possible the explicit consent is what to do patient has called me it is an emergency consultation now this is a very essential point the rmp should exercise his professional judgment to decide whether the telemedicine consultation is an appropriate in a given situation or in a person uh, in person consultation is needed that is the interest of the patient has to be taken it's all revolves around the professional judgment as he as the rmp recognizes it's an emergency uh, situation what he does is he will make he will advise for first aid counseling and he facilitates referral please do remember in all case of emergency the guideline mandates the patient must be advised for in person consultation at the earliest in person consultation in emergency situation so as much as possible do not engage patient for longer duration so emergency medical consultation in person consultation is required what to do patient has initiated the telemedicine consultation for the first time first consultation means patient is consulting the rmp for the first time or else the patient had come consulted the rmp before 6 months or else the patient had contacted the rmp around 2 months back but now it is for a different health condition for example the doc the patient had consulted the rmp for headache 2 months back now he is consulting for diarrhea so there are two different health condition now also it is considered as a first consultation the process is very clear the patient makes either a text by sending an email or a message or else he may make a phone call or a video call as soon as it does it consent is implied patient identification is done by asking for various uh, government uh, recognized id card quickly you will assess for any requirement of emergency medical condition if there is no emergency medical condition he will go ahead with the detailed assessment even during the detailed assessment he will finds that there is the patient requires emergency consultation so immediately he will refer him to in person consultation however if there is no emergency consultation is required you will continue with the uh, assessment you will uh, do the assessment and you will do health education counseling further he has an option to give medication list o if it is a video consultation he can give medication list a i will come to this medication list o and a shortly what to do my old patient has initiated the telemedicine consultation now this is called as a follow up consultation follow up consultation means the patient has consulted the rmp within 6 months of in person consultation please remember it is in person consultation that is very very essential so what are the exclusion the exclusion is if the rmp does not remember the patient though he has consulted him 6 months within 6 months but he is unable to remember this is high possibility if an rmp is very busy he may not remember or else if the patient has contacted two months back for headache and now today is contacting uh, on telemedicine for a diarrhea these are two different condition then it is considered as first consultation not a follow up so follow up consultation means the patient had contacted the rmp 
in person within past six months. Then it is called as follow-up consultation. The process is same. Patient will initiate the contact by either a text, email or messaging, audio, by phone call, video. As soon as he does it, consent is implied. Patient identification is done and he will check for the ID card. He will check whether the patient has the hospital number. He will verify he is talking to the patient properly. He may ask the patient to call by the identified mobile number. And if the, patient, if the doctor is satisfied he is talking to the same patient, he will continue with the consultation. But if he is not sure, he will stop the consultation then and there. But however, if there is any quick emergency is required, he immediately will ask for first aid and he will refer to in-person consultation. If there is no emergency requirement, he will continue with the detailed assessment. Once the RMP is ascertained, there is no emergency, immediately he will do health education, counseling, he may refill the medication or else he may go for least B medication. I will come to that shortly. However, during this detailed assessment, he will come to know the patient has new symptoms, new complaints belonging to a different health problems. Immediately, it will be considered as a new consultation. Can a caregiver initiate a teleconsultation? Of course, the caregiver can do it. Caregiver is a family member or any person authorized by the patient to represent him. There are two scenarios. Both patient and caregiver are present in the teleconsultation or else only caregiver is there. So the only caregiver is there, then it is allowed once the patient is minor or a patient is incapacitated like dementia or else the patient has given a formal authorization letter and also he, the patient has been verified by the RMP in-person consultation previously and also there should be a verifiable document to establish the relationship. Under these circumstances, caregiver can initiate the RMP, the telemedicine consultation and the RMP can give the telemedicine consultation. Can a health, health worker initiate a telemedicine consultation with an RMP? Of course, health worker means as per the guideline, nurse, allied health worker, mid-level health worker, AM, or any other health worker designated by the appropriate authority. The initiating setup will be from any health establishment, health camps, home visits, mobile medical units or any community based interaction. So the health worker can initiate from any place from for to a public establishment or a private establishment. And at the same point, the telemedicine guidelines also cast an obligation on the health worker that he should know the patient, he should have checked the ID before. Uh, calling the RMP. At the same time, you also need to take informed consent from the patient. Once the RMP is informed, RMP need to again verify the ID, phone, address, age proof, and then he will continue with the consultation as either it may be first consultation or as a follow-up consultation. Can a RMP initiate a telemedicine consultation with an another RMP? RMP to another RMP or else doctor to another doctor doctor to a specialist. Whenever a doctor wants to take a telemedicine consultation for his patient, the doctor needs to take explicit consent from the patient. And the legal and the clinical responsibility will be casted upon the RMP who had initiated the telemedicine consultation. So this is very essential. Explicit consent is required. Can a RMP prescribe any medication on telemedicine consultation? RMP has been empowered to prescribe medicine online. However, there are some requirements have been placed on the RMP. First and the foremost is professional accountability. The professional accountability which is required in in-person consultation, the same has been casted in even in telemedicine consultation. At the same time, the medical condition which requires to follow certain protocols, some SOPs before prescribing a medication if the same which is done in in-person consultation also has to be done in telemedicine consultation. At the same time, RMP can prescribe a medication only, again, only if he has gathered all information, relevant information, and he is able to arrive for a reasonable degree of diagnosis or a provisional diagnosis, then only he can prescribe medication. And the prescribing should be in the best interest of the patient. Along with this, RMP also need to know 
about the prescribing list. As per telemedicine guidelines, the prescribing list are four. List O, List A, List B and List C. List O means over-the-counter medications which do not require any kind of prescription. For example, paracetamol or else vitamins. List A. List A, List A is relatively safe medication with low potential for abuse. At the same time, refilling during follow-up. They are called as List A. List B. List B is a list of medication which RMP can prescribe in a patient who is undergoing follow-up consultation in addition to those which have been prescribed during in-person consultation for the same medical condition in a chronic medical condition actually like augmentation, add-on drugs in the chronic medical condition. List C is very essential. You cannot prescribe on telemedicine consultation. They are Schedule X and drugs listed under NDPS Act that cannot be prescribed by a RMP at any cost. Again, the matrix you can see the list O is the first column, second is the mode of consultation, the third column is nature of consultation and the fourth is list of medicine. Coming to the second row, O list can be prescribed by any method either by phone call, texting and that doesn't require any kind of prescription. Nature of consultation can be first or follow up and they are all list O. Coming to list A, the list A medication can be prescribed on video consultation for the first consultation. For the follow up, we can do refilling. So they are all list A. List B is any type is fine, but however, here the essential, the mode of consultation can be more audio, video or text. And it is basically chronic medical condition, either increasing the medicine, decreasing the medicine or adding the medicine. Prohibited list are Schedule X of Drugs and Cosmetic Acts of 1945, and the narcotic and psychotropic drugs which are listed under NDPS Act are prohibited. Under no circumstances, doctor can prescribe these medicines. The prohibited list, again, I am reminding you because if you prescribe this on telemedicine consultation, you will be considered as a misconduct under the guideline. Any narcotic and psychotropic substance listed in Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Act of 1985. For example, methadone, buprenorphine, ketamine, morphine, tramadol, codeine and benzodiazepines are there. So you cannot prescribe benzodiazepines under telemedicine guideline. Schedule X, again amphetamine, methamphetamine, dexamphetamine, phencyclidine, methylphenidate and other drugs. You cannot prescribe these medications under Schedule X of Drugs and Cosmetic Acts of 1945 rules. Caution for prescription. Before you prescribe, you have to have adequate information and you have to arrive at appropriate diagnosis and provisional diagnosis or a provisional diagnosis. Then only you can prescribe. Otherwise, if you don't know even a provisional diagnosis, it will be considered as a misconduct. And also, follow the telemedicine guideline category list before you prescribe. How to send the prescription? Now you have made a diagnosis, you have written the prescription, how to send it and what is the format? As per the, uh, the prescription should be in the format of Indian Medical Council Act Regulation 2002 and that can be sent either by a photo, take a photo of the prescription, send it, scan it, send it, digital copy of the signed prescription, that is also fine, or else an e-prescription of the patient via email is also or can be sent and it can be sent on any messaging platform even in WhatsApp. So this telemedicine guideline do not prohibit that. At the same time, if an RMP wants to send this prescription to a specific pharmacy, that requires explicit consent from the patient. The patient has to give in writing or by a audio or a video telling that I have allowed the doctor to send this prescription to certain specific pharmacy. Again, if you look at the prescription pattern, it starts with either the hospital name, along with the hospital name, name, registered medical practitioner's name, qualification, registration number, address, contact details, date and time, name and address of the patient. At the same time, you can ask for an ID. ID can be uh, marked here, age, gender, height, weight, LMP, 
on the left hand corner chief complaints relevant points from history examination lab findings and suggested investigation will be documented on the left hand corner at the same time you have to make diagnosis or a provisional diagnosis you cannot just write medication you have to have a diagnosis or provisional diagnosis at the same time medicines have to be written either in the name either in the generic name along with the medicines in the capital letter that is very essential or else you can type it and send it special instruction if you are given that has to be documented below at the same time rmp signature and stamp along with that at the bottom the person that there should be a clear written that this prescription is generated on a teleconsultation has to be written what constitute misconduct during this telemedicine consultation misconduct which are already listed under the indian medical council act and the regulation 2002 the same thing is applicable along with this rmps insisting on telemedicine consultation only when the patient says i want to come and meet in person consultation that is called as misconduct rmp misusing the patient images data without the explicit consent rmp who uses telemedicine to prescribe prohibited medicine like list c then also it is considered as misconduct rmps are not permitted to solicit patient for telemedicine through various advertisement or inducement they are all considered as misconduct penalties are same as per the indian medical council act ethics 2002 the same penalties will be given what records to be keep kept in the telemedicine consultation this is one very essential question which arises what are the records on telemedicine consultation the medical records to be kept in telemedicine consultation are log record of telemedicine interaction such as phone logs email text messages sms messages or <clears throat> messages from whatsapp video interaction logs patient reports records documents images diagnostic data utilized in telemedicine consultation should be retained by the rmp at the same time the rmp has to require to maintain a copy of the prescription as a medical record when you are doing online consultation which is similar to in person consultation <clears throat> what about the confidentiality and privacy of the data rmp will shall abide by the same indian medical council act professional conduct etiquettes and ethics regulation 2002 along with that e is mandated to follow the it act that is information technology act data protection and privacy law or any applicable rules notified from time to time and also rmp should ensure the reasonable degree of care undertaken during hiring any such services can we charge fee for the teleconsultation of course the charges are similar to in person consultation the fee perspective is same whatever you charge in person consultation same thing will be charged here and an appropriate fee for telemedicine consultation can also be charged and but however the rmp should give a receipt or invoice for this telemedicine consultation what is the role and responsibility of technology platforms or what you call it as aggregators online platforms what what do they do they also have been given some roles and responsibilities these aggregators or what we call it as a softwares just like uber they contact on one hand doctors on the other hand the clients these are the software companies which like uber they will provide they will take services from the doctor and provide services to the patient these aggregators should only enroll rmps qualification and contact details of the rmp should be displayed grievance mechanism should be in place and artificial intelligence is prohibited for consultation and prescribing by these aggregators online platform if they do any kind of violation the ministry of health and family welfare can blacklist these softwares and prohibit and then can prohibit the rmps to use these platforms how to avoid medical legal issues online first and the foremost identify the patient by government authorized id identify the patient as any emergency medical requirement please do diagnose or a provisional diagnose before you prescribe medicine please follow the prescribing list as per the guidelines please retain a copy of the investigation or the prescription in a physical form with you do not share the patient data with anyone legal issues will be similar to in person consultation in the 
telemedicine consultation also. Coming to the critique of the guideline, the positive aspects are this is patient centric and patient friendly. This is very simple but comprehensive. At the same time, professional clinical freedom has been given to the RMP. At any time, RMP can say you have to go for in-person consultation. At the same time, texting, audio, video, digital format of telemedicine is recognized. It cuts across through all digital format. It does not prohibit social media because the telemedicine guidelines is basically patient centric. So the patient has access to simple smartphone and that smartphone has simple, what we call it as social media like WhatsApp, Facebook, any messaging platform which can be utilized to contact a doctor. This guideline is basically for helping the patient. It is not doctor centric. It does not talk about hi-fi application, hi-fi hardware. It has been patient centric and it has made very simple. If you ask me, it is one of the best guidelines in the world in terms of user perspective. It does not talk about HIPAA compliance and various issues. It makes attempts to reach the rural patient. This has been a paradigm shift. It is going to change the way we are going to practice medicine. This is a game changer in the healthcare industry. Let me remind you, by another five years down the line, the way we are going to practice medicine is going to change completely. But however, it has certain drawbacks. If the patient releases the RMPs, whatever videos and audio without the consent of the doctor, what will happen? That the guideline is very silent. If the patient has some complaints against the RMP, suppose the patient is staying in West Bengal and doctor is given case consultation from Kerala. Now, if the patient from West Bengal, if he has to give complaint, will he give complaint in West Bengal or in Kerala? This is not been very clear. Insurance for telemedicine consultation is also is silent. At the same time, aggregators storing the data, where the data will be there, who is the owner of the data, that is also is very silent. Online platforms, nowadays they advertise about the doctor and also rating of the doctors is done by the client. These are not being discussed very clearly in the telemedicine guideline. However, this guideline is going to be a game changer. To conclude, this telemedicine guideline is timely in the background of pandemic of coronavirus. We have to now make change. To make the change, the person is you and the solution is telemedicine. And we have to foster to reach the patients in rural area that is right to healthcare at home. That reality can be made possible with this guideline. Thank you very much.